Hello. Hello. It's a brew day. The video about beer. Always, it's very exciting. Very exciting every single time. Today is no exception to the excitement. It is included. It is fabulous as always. I honestly wasn't even planning to brew today. And I was like, you know what? I want to. I'm feeling the urge. It's been a couple weeks. What's in my fridge? Start ransacking around and whatever hops was in there, I decided that was gonna be the IPA I made. Yes, it's another IPA, but it's different because I'm adding a lot of hops, so it's different. Here they are. This is what's in, this is what's in my fridge. I got 0.3 ounces of Glacier. Whatever amount is unwritten on here of cashmere, an unvacuum sealed Huel Melon. This will be a smell before I use it. Gotta make sure that's fresh or fresh smelling. This is 1.5 ounces of Horizon. And I have 14 alpha acids worth of, well, 14 alpha acids of Equinot. I don't know the amount. So I'm gonna just uh, throw everything at it. Maybe about a 60 IBUs. The goal is to use every single one of these hops for the bittering and like the flavor addition. Dry hopping, I might not have enough, but I hope I do for at least one charge of something. So I'm gonna see how I split this up. First, I gotta find out what I have exactly. So um, I'll, I'll do that right now and come right back. All right, I have three ounces total of all the hops. Um, is the Huel Melon. I'm gonna decide if I wanna use these or not. They don't smell the freshest, but they're not like the worst. Um, I do wish I vacuum sealed them, but I'm not sure how old they are either. I think they're like six months, probably. They were in the freezer the whole time. So yeah, I'm gonna calculate these hops and see how I wanna add them and when and all that kind of stuff. If I'm gonna mash them all uh, into one, dump them in that way or stagger it, I'm not sure yet. But while I figure that out, uh, let's get the brew day started. All right, back. I'm, I'm gonna uh, tell you what I did here before I do that. You did notice that I used a carbon filter. I did use a one gallon of sealed water to my 3.75 gallons total. So um, I only cut a gallon of that with that sealed water. I just, I'm gonna try it out. I haven't used the, the tap water in a very long time. Um, our water swings run a lot here in Glendale, California. It's also very hard. So I'm not gonna actually really add any, any gypsum or anything like that to it. Um, bigger will be good as is. I will check my pH here um, once I do mash in. Other than that, I'm just gonna ride it out. F it. The hops I decided to do here are the uh, schedule. 0.5 ounces of Horizon at 60 minutes. 0.4 ounces of Equinot for 15 minutes. 0.3 ounces of Glacier for 10 minutes. And 0.2 ounces of Cashmere at 10 minutes. I just love the way that sounds, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, each at various times. That's an IBUs of 86, and I should have just about le enough left over for, uh, for dry hopping. And it looks like I'm gonna have about uh, 1.5 ounces for that. I'll just combine them all into one, one big charge, probably in the keg. I'm gonna do this into two one gallon jugs like I did the last time, um, and then I'm gonna combine them uh, uh, kegging and uh, get two gallons out of it. That's just two row, and then uh, whatever yeast I have, probably USO5. I'll see if I have anything fresh, but I don't think I do. And uh, yeah, there you go. Let's continue. like a, a milliliter of lactic acid I gotta add a lot more apparently Ooh, mama I heard it had softened up because we had some rain recently well in the last two months a fair amount more than usual apparently not enough so the brand of um, pH meter I have is called Apera A-P-E-R-A -E I've had it for about for about maybe, I don't know, over a year now, maybe two. It's work great, um, but it does need to be calibrated every one, every now and then, like every pH meter. Um, I'm gonna test it now just against a four pH solution and see how accurate it is. 
Uh, so I might have to calibrate this. 6.7 seems really high to me for my for my mash pH. So it's close. Yeah, it's right on. It's at four. Wow, so I haven't calibrated this pH meter in, I don't know, three months, four months maybe. It's still accurate. So that's kind of cool. Um, it's, it was, man, I think it's only like 60 or 70 bucks too. It's not that expensive. I got the green one. Um, they, had a, they have a couple different ones. It says pH 20 pH tester on the back for those who care. All right, let's try the mash again here. All right, there it is, 5.6. Man, I actually didn't show it on camera, but I had to do two millimeters when you guys were, when it was on the camera, another two of this. And I was like, that's not gonna be enough. And I actually ended up just pouring <laughs> some lactic acid into there and started it in. I needed a lot, probably eight millimeters or milliliters, I should say. Maybe seven, somewhere in that range, which, wow, my water is very hard, which is why, case in point, I have been using uh, distilled water for months. But um, 5.6 is in the ballpark. I'm going to leave it. One thing I should say about this, what I do do as a tip, this is calibrated for heat. Um, you can see it's 95 degrees. There's an adjustment you can do. I forgot the calculation to where you can, um, for ones that don't really have a heat adjustment. But this, as far as I understand it, is heat adjusted. I still put a bowl with ice cubes in it and then you know fill this with wort a little bit of it and I kind of and then put it in the ice bath and let it cool off for about a minute then I, then I take my pH reading so that's just a tip you can get ones that are fully calibrated they're really 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 fancy ones so it's gonna be hundreds of dollars but they're you just put them directly in the mash I've seen brewers do it and it works uh, off the bat just like that anyway there you go so let's uh, let's, let's continue All right, I'm at 2.9 gallons. Not bad, that's, uh, I think last time I got 2.85 gallons uh, pre-boil. Something I did today, and I did, I did the last time too, I don't think I showed it on camera, was that I actually started my mash out after about 45 minutes into my mash. Then right when it hit 170, I then um, just let it kind of sit there for about, for about three minutes, did a recirculation on it. But the idea behind that is I get my mash out and I'm getting a lot closer to my boil. So when I pull the grains out, I don't, I don't have that much more to go to the boil. So it's a double, uh, it takes care of a, of a couple things, which I like. All right, let's take a, uh, let's see the gravity's at. 1050, perfect. Ten sixty one, going for ten sixty three. So I plan on fermenting it at sixty three degrees. That's how I, I have it out here, actually sixty two, um, and then I'll raise it up for some sort of dash the rest near the end of fermentation. Dry hop in the keg, and uh, yeah, I'll probably try dry hop warm this time. Maybe like three or four days, about sixty degrees Fahrenheit, then cold condition it, um, put and then put gas on it. But yeah, let's go to the tasting right now. This is it, the tasting. I let this one kind of clear out a little bit more this time. Still a little on the hazy side. It's definitely better than uh, when I drink it really young. It's been in the keg for about two weeks now with the hops. And uh, here we go. The smell on it is very, very melon. Mango, melon, like heavy in that regard. I'm not getting too much citrus or fruit or anything. Very, very fruity. One of the most fruity hops or, or beers I've ever made actually. Um, Tastes is good, less fruity, more dank, a little more earthy. Um, it's a lot more like peppery, grassy than I would like in the in the taste. You know, I did my normal amounts. I always do for my high ABU beers. You know, in the eighty range, um, the dry hopping I think is like one point five ounces, but two gallons. That's not that bad. Um, not definitely on the high end by any means. But yeah, the taste has a little bit of this grass to it, which I'm not a huge fan of. But it's still it's still enjoyable. It's not overbearing. Um, it could also just be like the hops themselves, you know, a little more earthy, a little more, uh, a little more pepper in there. Uh, again, yeah, there could be the hops, maybe not, it's not even grassy, but it has this earthy sort of grass thing going on. Anyway, it's still very enjoyable. I still love this beer, and um, I love the idea of just taking what you have and making it into something, whether it's just ingredients lying around, 
uh, being like grain or you have like uh, um, just certain yeast and you combine them to see what happens and it's one of my favorite things to do with beer is just what do you have I'm gonna make a beer today I love it and this is one of those and it still turned out drinkable and pretty delicious actually so there you go there it is the hodgepodge beer it did it yet again it's always a good time you guys got there and try it um, keep getting weird as always stay tuned for more videos and see you next time